Science Behind the Athlete Series, What Makes a Successful Endurance Athlete? Part 3, Pain Tolerance. All of us have experienced pain at some point and many of us during sporting events, but what is pain and how do we perceive it? How do elite athletes deal with it? Recently, pain has been defined as a distressing experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage with sensory, emotional, cognitive and social components. Pain is both a mechanical and an emotional experience. Although pain is detected by nociceptors or special pain receptors, it cannot be denied that pain is very much an emotional experience. Interestingly, pain can be experienced differently according to genetic makeups, social settings and habituation to the stimulus. From the genetic viewpoint, it has been noted that the gene COMT is most associated with pain. In fact, this particular gene has been widely researched for its association with pain. Two common variants of this gene, VAL and MET, based on whether the gene's DNA sequence codes for valine or methionine, have been suggested as potential pain regulators for their involvement in anxiety or catastrophizing. People with two versions of the MET gene variant tend to perform better on cognitive tasks but are more prone to experiencing pain. Conversely, individuals who carry two versions of the VAL variant are more likely to perform poorly on cognitive tasks but are less likely to experience pain. Interestingly, it has also been shown that those with a non-functioning version of the MC1R gene, or in plain language, redheads, are more likely to have a tolerance to certain types of pain and require less morphine for pain relief. Finally, those with a rare mutation of the SCN9A gene are incapable of feeling pain and commonly die in their teens due to injury. This gene mutation blocks the pain signals that are typically sent to the brain and in turn, no perception of pain is felt. Despite the genetic composition of the individual, when injury is encountered, a sensory nerve cell called a nociceptor sends electrical signals via afferent neural pathways to the spinal cord and brain. This process leads to the sensation of pain and occurs in an attempt to prevent further injury. Likewise, muscle contractions are thought to cause pain by placing mechanical pressure on pressure-sensitive nociceptors and by generating a host of painful or algesic biochemical byproducts within the muscle. Amman 2011 found that when type 3 and 4 metabosensitive afferent neurons, or neurons that detect metabolic changes, were blocked by means of fentanyl injection, that cyclists could produce more power over a 5 km time trial, but that a greater degree of peripheral fatigue became evident. These findings may highlight the relationship between peripheral and central mechanisms of fatigue, and as such it has been suggested that humans never voluntarily perform high intensity exercise to such an extent that would incur peripheral fatigue beyond their sensory tolerance limit. Further to this, recent research has highlighted that a novel reverse VO2 protocol is capable of producing VO2 max scores almost 5% higher than those recorded in a traditional incremental VO2 max test. This highlights that the plateau in oxygen consumption found during incremental tests does not represent the ceiling of cardiovascular capacity. It has been proposed that lower VO2 scores attained in a normal incremental test might represent an anticipatory difference in perception of the future workload and might impact the sympathetic and parasympathetic drives and lead to differences in metabolic responses during exercise. In plain terms, it can be reasoned from both of the previously mentioned studies that an inbuilt safety mechanism exists to avoid potential injury and that may limit performance. As tempting as the prospect seems, pain cannot be treated as a purely physiological process. Pain circuitry and emotional circuitry are intertwined, as are many of the neurotransmitters. In short, modifying your emotions will surely modify your experience of pain. In a 1998 study, Sternberg tested elite athletes' response to pain two days prior to a competition, on a day of competition, and two days after a competition, and found that athletes were less sensitive to pain when compared to non-athletes, and that the athletes were least sensitive to pain on game day. Sternberg reasoned that this was likely due to the increased need to activate the fight or flight mechanism in response to the upcoming competition. Examples of this are not uncommon. If you think of elite MMA fighters or footballers after a collision or a cyclist after a crash, it is not uncommon to see the athlete continue despite apparent injury. Further to this, it has been suggested that the experience of pain must be learned in order for it to be perceived and understood as pain. Research into pain has repeatedly shown that animals kept in isolation respond differently to pain and will repeatedly expose themselves to the pain stimulus, almost as if they are incapable of understanding it. That is, the animals never learn to be deterred by the painful stimulus even after experiencing it. 
Because of the influence emotions play on pain, there exists an opportunity for the person to moderate pain during sport. Psychologists offer the following advice. If you interpret your pain as threatening, or if you focus on the pain rather than concentrate on your sport, then the pain will increase and interfere with your performance. On the other hand, if you view the pain as something that is natural and necessary and interpret it as a sign that you're working hard and achieving your goals, then your pain can become an ally. Many athletes find that recognising that they're not alone in their pain is helpful. The athletes playing with them also hurt and the challenge of tolerating your pain may add to the competition. In addition, athletes often report great satisfaction after persevering through a painful training session or competition. Finally, the supplement caffeine has been shown to reduce both pain and perception of effort and possesses several hypoalgesic or pain reducing effects. It is believed that this is due to the increased adenosine levels found in the blood following caffeine ingestion. It is suggested that between 4 to 12 milligrams per kilo of body weight of caffeine be ingested one hour before it is required. Thanks for watching.